All right, everyone, it's time for a Hurricane Irma update because we've got a lot of updates to go through. It's uh, moving very fast uh, through its region. Uh, I believe tomorrow it's going to be idling pretty close to the Floridian coast, if I remember correctly, or the day after. And uh, it's done a huge amount of damage. There is one little spot of light in this otherwise dark storm which is that Puerto Rico has been largely spared. Uh, they saw freakish amounts of wind and rain themselves, but the storm moved north just far enough so that they didn't get a direct hit. Now, this is good and bad. It's good for Puerto Rico uh, because their damage is considerably less. Still knocked out power for over half a million people, but the overall damage was far less than it could have been. It would have been amazing to see if it had been further south. A lot of those uh, sort of north coastal regions in Puerto Rico would have been largely destroyed. But this also means that the storm didn't start to weaken just a little bit because it was going over a larger landmass. Instead, it stayed largely out to sea and is staying intact. Uh, it looks like it's not going to do much scraping along Cuba either, which means that it's possible. They're not projecting this, I believe, at this time, but it could be a Category 5 even when it hits Florida. Whereas before, I think they were certain it would at least be weakened to a Category 4. It would still be a freakishly powerful storm. Damage would still be considerable. But it may have knocked it out of the top five as far as storms making landfall in the continental United States power-wise. Now it doesn't look, I think, like that's going to actually be the case. I think it's going to be one of the, the top two or three most powerful to ever make landfall uh, in living memory. And that's a problem. Because where it's probably going to make landfall uh, contains a nuclear plant and the, the city of Miami, actually. Yeah, I, I can see this being potentially a bit hazardous. Now, they used the term yesterday, nuclear hurricane, to indicate the power and strength uh, of actually this storm. Because if it goes through your community, it's going to look a little bit like a nuclear war has happened. Because there's not going to, most of the non hardened structures probably won't be standing up. Uh, those that are won't be in good repair, essentially, unless you're living in a hobbit home with five feet of dirt protecting the inner structure, you probably, you lost a couple rooms, probably a roof, at the very least, your windows are gone, your door's been ripped off, there goes your mailbox, and there are cows flying through the air, so to speak. But uh, it's, I think it's going to be a real, a real power punch to Florida. And people there that haven't evacuated already from the lower half of the state and from coastal regions, take it under advisement that it's not a good idea to sit around. Because I'm sure there were plenty of people in Barbuda who thought the same way. Said, oh, well, I'm just going to ride it out. And now they're, uh, they're homeless and they're wandering around a largely de-vegetated uh, island that has been largely stripped of all standing structures. I think the island of Barbuda, if I remember, lost 90% of all of its structures. They're gone. They don't exist anymore. They're nothing more than rubble. Some of them have been blown apart so completely. There's little more than a footprint where the building used to be. And Guila last night, I don't even think had restored uh, communication with the outside world. Things were so bad. Uh, I was sent, one of my friends in Florida said me, uh, a link to part of a stream from St. Martin. Uh, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. I know it's it's St. Martin or St. Martin or oh, okay. Well, I'm not I'm not French, so forgive me for that. Uh, it was unbelievable, and it looked like at least two of the cameras very quickly went down once the storm actually began because it was so severe. We're talking gusts above 200 miles per hour. That hitting the average uh, wooden framed home, it's just going to rip it apart. It will be like a nuclear weapon went off. Um, so people in the Miami area, because it looks like that's where it's going to smash into, it looks like that's the most likely. Second would be it goes further to the right, it goes further west and comes around Tampa. Either way, uh, Florida is going to have some severe, severe damage. This <clears throat> is way bigger than Harvey. What happens, by the way, because there's always unpredictability when you're talking about a hurricane. There's never 100% certainty of where it's going until it's already there. What happens if it decides to slow down like Harvey did and idle around the eastern coast of Florida and not only give it a, a punch of, rain, of wind, but also dump several feet of rain there? 
thereby, thereby multiplying the misery. Now, Florida is more flat. It's not like a mountainous region where all of the water gets concentrated in some mountain valley, just totally rips it to pieces. It's more flat, and so it can maybe deal with flooding. It, it recedes a bit more quickly than maybe a, a Houston or something. It has a little bit more, a, little, a few more hills to it or something like that. Not many, but a few. Okay. Uh, it would still cause massive damage. And it's going to anyway. Wherever this storm makes landfall is basically screwed. Some tracks still have it out further to the east, literally still in the ocean, like it has done in the northern Caribbean region. It hasn't gone over any major land masses. It's scraping along the sides of them without losing much power. Uh, what happens if it decides to make impact in the Carolinas? Well, that would be uh, that would be pretty bad. It would probably be worse in terms of death toll and and uh, uh, damage. It'd probably be worse than if it hits Florida, where at least some things have been constructed with hurricanes in mind. Not necessarily the top concern for people in North Carolina. What happens if it bends just a little bit further and comes wheeling around into D.C. and then goes scraping over, you know, mountainous Virginia and West Virginia or something, and then travels up but still bringing feet of rain up through Pennsylvania or something like that. There's still the vague possibility. I think New York is out of the crosshairs now. Originally their big concern was, oh, this storm might track in such a way that it stays a category three or four and smashes into New York City and New Jersey, thereby destroying large sections of both. Well, that's not going to happen, so you should breathe a sigh of relief, even though uh, a lot of people in Florida wish that that was going to be the case so they could continue enjoying a sunny day. It looks like it's going to be Miami or thereabouts. And considering that it's basically wiped out the surface of three different islands at this point, and that even its uh, weaker outer bands, without even the center of the storm getting near Puerto Rico, were able to knock out significant amounts of power destroy structures and generally bring havoc to the northern half of the island considering that that's it's it's lesser capability a direct hit in miami my goodness you're going to lose thousands and thousands of homes probably tens of thousands uh they won't exist anymore this is a this is a windy fast moving storm it's not like harvey that sort of chugged up out of the ocean like Leviathan, stalled out going two miles per hour and decided to just soak everything in its path until it fell apart. This one's going to whiz through Florida, bringing hours of, of 200 mile per hour wind gusts. What exactly is going to be left of these smaller structures with that kind of force involved? Uh, I think uh, in, in pressure related news, I think they were analyzing it and it actually had the uh, the most advanced uh, drop in pressure, I think. I think they decided that it was worse than Allen or Andrew or any of these other large storms from the past. Uh, and it's still a Category 5, I believe, right as we speak, and going through the Bahamas. So where it hits is still not 100% certain, but it looks like eastern Florida is going to take that hit. What happens if the term nuclear storm decides to become literal reality and a nuclear plant melts down because of the catastrophic damaged infrastructure? Yeah, we got two feet of rain over a few hours and 200 mile an hour winds have knocked out the, the exhaust towers and, some, and certainly the backup power supply has been washed away. Uh, we can't maintain the nuclear plant. We're approaching criticality and there's water leaking in everywhere because it's a fucking hurricane. Uh, by the way, all of the people uh, working here have fled because uh, their homes no longer exist and half of them evacuated. What a wonderful time. I'm going to assume that in the uh, run-up to this storm, they're going to put everything in such a state that hopefully that doesn't happen. But it could be a, a little bit of a prophetic statement when they call it a nuclear storm. It's possible. Um, stranger things have happened. If Fukushima can get fucked by a tidal wave, by a tsunami... Uh, yeah, a, a hurricane with <laughs> significant strength could probably knock out a nuclear plant. Probably could. Not the greatest place to build one anyway, Florida, uh, considering, again, hurricane prone. It's like building one in the San Andreas Fault region. You're just asking for problems. I don't think that will happen. I think it's probably fear-mongering when people talk about it. But the fact that it is a possibility does remain. The fact that many homes will be destroyed by this storm wherever it makes landfall is definitely true. 
it's not 100% certain that it makes a landfall even in Florida. It could go further east and hit the Carolinas or Virginia or, or potentially go further north. Of course, if it stays out there, the tracks may continue to change over time. Uh, but it looks like Miami. It, yep. Yeah, my, welcome to Miami. All that cocaine is going to get swept up into that storm and deposited along the coast. So after the storm, you can go outside and breathe the fresh air. You'll feel a little bit better than normal. I guess that's the only consolation. That's about all. Peace out.